All right, so welcome back, everybody. So for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to play Taverns of Tippenthal. Now, in this game, we are tavern owners, and we are trying to basically bring in the wealthiest of patrons to our tavern so we can have the most successful, most prosperous tavern in the town. And we do this by obviously attracting nobles and other rich people to our tavern. But to do so, we also need to upgrade our taverns. And so you'll notice that this module here, this, this tavern of ours, is a bunch of different pieces connected to each other. Hence, you'll be doing this, putting this together like a sort of like almost like a puzzle. Now it's it's on the correct side, but you'll notice there are, um, for instance, each tile, some of these tiles are double-sided. So this is actually the second side, and this is the first side. Um, when you up, when you're able to upgrade one of these modules here, you will have to pay a fee, of course. You'll have to do that, and then you can upgrade it. And then whenever you upgrade, as a benefit, every time you upgrade one of these locations here, you'll automatically get a noble card. That's how you're going to get these noble cards, and they're worth 10 victory points. So that's a lot of victory points, considering some of these patrons up here, some of them aren't worth quite as much. Like this one's only worth one victory point, for instance. This patron, this, get, this guest, she's only worth four victory points. So... That's basically the only w real ways you're going to score victory points is getting more guests in your town, hiring more staff. You'll get some you'll get victory points for some of the staff you hire and obviously obviously attracting the most wealthiest of people in the town to your tavern. So in order to make money, you of course need to be able to basically feed your guests booze, beer, and stuff like that. Now, this game is a deck-building game. It is also a dice placement game as well. So we've got dice here. We've got even got some colored dice for each player. Sometimes you'll be using these. And it's also a deck-building game as well. So let's get started talking about how you play this game. So the first, there's actually eight rounds in this game. And the first phase of the game which is called a new evening in the tavern. The first phase of the game is actually just moving this token up one spot. And even the first one here will give you a bonus. Every time you move this token up to the next round, you will get a bonus which you will immediately take which will immediately take effect. And so the very first bonus that all players get is this little token here. We can use this token at any time in the game, but it's a one-time use, and it's double-sided for two different effects, so we can choose to use it for this effect here, which after we draw cards and we place cards out into our tavern, if we don't like the setup of the cards that we have placed out, we can discard all of the cards and obviously redraw new cards into the tavern by using this one-time use token here. Um, and the other side... If we use this side instead, we can move our token here, this little disc here, up one on the monastery track. That's one of the ways that it will move up, but that's not really the main way it will move up. Okay, so, so the first phase, obviously, was moving that up and getting this token. The second phase of the, get, of the game is um, the guests have arrived. So remember, this, this is a simultaneous game. So a lot of the stuff we'll be doing is simultaneous. We'll be doing it at the same time. So during the second phase of the game, which is the guests arrive, we will take our cards, and there's a deck of cards here. And in our deck of cards, we start with seven guests or patrons, whichever you want to call that. We also start with one brewer, hence this card. We also start with one table card, and we also start with one of these, these uh, servers, if you will, or waitresses. We start with one of them as well. So we will shuffle our deck, and, it, and so it's just a deck of 10 cards. You'll shuffle it, 
as best as you can. I'm not a very good shuffler, so this is all I can do. Okay, and then we will we will reveal the top five cards, and let's see what we got here, and we'll start placing them out. So we will try to fill in our tables first, and let's see how many tables we fill in. We fill in a total of all of our tables, and that's all we got. So once you fill in all of your tables with patrons, you can no longer draw cards. But if you draw other cards before you draw these, like, for instance, this one here, or this one, or this one, for instance, if we draw some of those, before we draw those, then we can continuously draw cards until we have filled every single empty table that we have, okay? Every single one. Okay, that's what's going to happen. And then we put our we put our decks back here, for instance. And then now we now the guests have arrived. Okay, and so then then after everyone's guests have arrived, then we all move on to the next phase of the game, which is called "Here Comes the Server." So during the "Here Comes the Server" phase of the game, we will each take these four dice and we will roll them. You'll notice we have these coasters here where we put dice. So we'll be putting them, these dice, on coasters. And there's a coaster for each player. So if you're playing two players, there's two coasters. If you're playing with four players, there's four coasters. And there's four dice on each coaster. So you will roll the four dice. And I've got a dice tower to help me roll. And then you'll put them back. And we'll roll these as well. And then we'll put them back as well. Okay, then the starting player, um, you know, the starting player will first pick a dice and rotate it to the other side. So they will, for instance, they will take a dice from here of their choice. Now, this is a dice placement game, so as well as a deck building game. And so we'll be placing dice in various locations. Like for this, to serve this server here, we need to place a two dice here. We will not do that right away, but we do want to plan ahead and think about where we can put dice. So if you see a question mark with a one times on it, which is very small, it's hard to see on the camera, but this has a one times on it. You can only put one dice on this on this location, but it can be any number, okay? This one, you have to, it has to be a five, but it can be any amount of fives. So if you have several of fives, you know, two or three fives, then you could put them all here because there's no limit to the amount of fives you could put there. That's the monk, okay? Um, at this, let's see, nothing there, nothing there. Oh, here. You can put any dice you want here as well for one beer, but you can only put one dice here max. You can put as many ones or sixes here for one beer each. So if you take a one off of here, you'll get a beer. If you take a six off of here, you'll get a beer. If you take one of each, you're getting two beers, okay? That's how that's going to work. So if we have multiple dice here, we can get tons of beer that way. We can also get beer from here. This one we can get money from, but only one money right now, okay? And uh, then, of course, we can get two money if we put... A dice here, two money if we put a dice here, two money if we put a dice here. Remember, these have to be twos right now. So, you know, there's not that many twos available. In fact, there's only one over there and only one over here. So, for instance, uh, maybe I'll take the two since there's not very many of them. Then you'll basically put it right here sort of behind your tavern, okay? Behind the counter, so to speak. That's where you'll leave it, okay? Then you'll... Hand the coaster with the dice that are still on it to that player over here. And they will, of course, they will take a die from this location and then hand the coaster over to you for you to peruse and decide which ones, which one you're going to take. Of course, let's see, we got a one, three, and a six. So I will probably take the six. And then, you know, obviously hand the coaster back to them. And then they will take a dice for their choosing, probably the five, okay? So they'll take, oh, they'll probably take a one, actually. And then they'll hand the hand it over to me, and then I will take a look and probably take a five. 
And then that means they will obviously get the last one, which is a three. And they will take one of these before I get a chance to take one of these. So they'll take, oh, I don't know, probably hmm, a one. And then I'll take the three, okay? And then that's how that part of the phase is going to go. Once everyone has taken their dice, okay, then the next phase of the game commences. Um, actually, that's, sorry. So, um, obviously, can I take your order is going to be the phase where you're taking dice. The next phase after that is plan your actions, okay? So that's when we take these dice and we plan on where we're going to put said dice, okay? So that's the next phase of the game. So, for instance, um, I definitely want some money, so we will put one here at this location for some money. Um... We could get some beers, so I'll put that six there. I'll put the five here on the monk. This is the monk. And the three, I guess I'll just put here. Okay? And then obviously, once the other player has made up their mind of what, um, where they're going to place their dice and stuff like that, then the next phase of the game begins, which is called serve the guests. And so then when we do, when we do serve the guests then a whole bunch of stuff happens. We take dice off for money. We take dice off to move our discs up on the monastery, if there is such a thing. We take dice off for beer, that kind of thing. So right now I can take one dice off for one beer. Well, one beer alone isn't going to get me anything, so we'll just save that one beer for later. Right now I can only have a maximum of two beer so if I was to get more than two, I'm, I'm out of luck because I won't get to use it all. I won't be able to save it all either. Because right now I can only save one. But if I want to maybe save more beer for later, if this was one of the tiles I upgraded, I could pay seven money and upgrade this tile here. So that way I can actually have up to five beer that I could save for a future turn. So that's one of the reasons why you might want to upgrade certain tiles. And then every time, like I said, every time you upgrade something, you'll get a noble. And that will obviously give you some victory points. Okay, so, and then let's say I take this one off and this one off for three money. Now, I can only also save up to two money right now, but I will use that three money right now to buy myself a server. When you have a server, and you don't start with any servers in the game, so you'll definitely want to buy one of these as soon as you can. A server will allow you to use one of your dice to increase its number by one. So, for instance, let's say I had just a number one, and I wanted to upgrade it to a two, and I had a server in play in my tavern at work. I could basically put a one onto one of these locations that requires a two, and because I have a server here, it's a basically a two now. That's what basically that's going to do for every server I have. I could do it for multiple dice, or I could do several, several of these dishwashers to basically increase the number of the dice by one for each one of these I have out. So getting a lot of servers is obviously a must if you don't have the best... Uh, roll of the dice, if you will. And then once I take this dice off of the monk, I get to increase my, I get to go up one on the monastery track. Now, when you get a benefit from the mon uh, monastery track, you'll automatically get the bonus immediately. So if you don't use the bonus, then you lose it. So you'll definitely want to use the bonus if you can, or if you can, save it for later too. That would also help. So um, let's see here. <sighs> okay, so we basically explained that part of the game. Then, after everything is done, basically it's closing time. So the closing time of the phase begins, and that's when you basically discard all of the cards you have out. Every single card you have out will get discarded. Okay? And basically that's gonna how that's going to work. So you'll do all that. And then, after that... After that, you will prepare for the next round, right? And so you will go up one on the round, and you'll begin the game, phase of the game, basically. So, anyways, so let's talk about some of the stuff, uh, some of the stuff here that, some of the cards, what they do, for instance. So, if you buy the bear back here, 
because you don't start with this. When you do have it, when you do get it, you get to place it here for an additional beer. So that way you can obviously have more beer around. So that's basically what the bareback does. Um, let's see, the server, if you get a server, if you start the game off with a server, you'll automatically get to roll one of these dice, meaning, and the, you'll, you'll notice there's only three of these dice, hence the, mount, the max amount of servers you can have is three, okay? Three. And so, so that's why... That's why you may not want to buy too many of these, because if you have too many of these, it's almost a waste, because you can only have three max anyways. But you do get to start off with an additional dice roll, and additional dice for dice placement, if you have a server out. So that's what servers do. If you have one of these, these brewers here, and let's say if it was right here, the brewers here, and you had a one or a six or whatever, then when you take a dice off of here, then it increases the beer that you're taking off per dice by one. So for every dice was here, if I had one of these out, I'd actually be removing, I'd be removing one dice, but getting two beers for the cost of one dice. So that's how you get a lot of beer that way. So if you have a lot of dice here, when you have one of these here, you'll have a lot of beer. And then if you have a lot of beer, you might be able to afford these, you know, more expensive patrons, if you will, for more beer. Now, some of these patrons also have bonuses as well. So you might get some bonuses for some of these patrons as well, see, some of these guests. So that's what you'll get, basically, for, um, for the beer, for the upgrade. So let's see here. What else? So I explained that part of the game, the going up on the monastery track. I explained that. Um, obviously dice placement, and then of course you'll always put your dice back to the coaster once you've used them, okay, obviously, and obviously you're going to try to want to, you'll obviously get these when you upgrade certain tiles, every time you upgrade a tile, you will get a noble, and what do you get if you upgrade some tiles, well, if you upgrade this one here, for every dice you take off, you'll get two beer instead of one, so normally you would just get one beer per dice unless you have some cards out. But if you have this upgraded to two beers, then you can get two beers for every dice that is here. And not only that, but the cost of it is 18 to upgrade. But you can decrease the cost by six for every card you have here. So if you have a card here and you're going to use some money here to basically purchase this upgrade you could you could actually discard this back to the supply for minus six money so now this would only cost you 12 money so that makes it much more affordable this one only costs seven money to upgrade but then it'll allow you to have up to five beers at a time okay so that's another upgrade you will have the monk here when you upgrade the monk, and it costs 12 money to upgrade the monk, when you upgrade the monk, every time you take this action here, where you put a 5 here, instead of moving up 1 on the monastery track, you'll move up 2. So that's what you get if you upgrade that. If you upgrade this tile here, okay, and it costs 10 money to upgrade, but once you upgrade it, every time you place a dice here, and you can still only place one dice here per round, You'll get three money instead of one money, okay? So that's what that will do. If you upgrade this tile here, and it costs nine money to upgrade, whenever you place a dice here, instead of getting one beer, you will get two beer from this tile, okay? So that's what you get for upgrading that. Don't forget, you get a noble every time you upgrade. Also, if you upgrade this tile here, let's see if I can take it off. Okay. If you upgrade the tables tile here, and it costs 15 money to upgrade, okay? If you upgrade this one, then you'll have four permanent tables. Instead of three permanent tables, you'll have four, okay? Remember, you can get more tables by drawing cards that are table cards. However, however, with that said, if you have a table card in play, when you decide to purchase this tile, you can basically return the table to here, to decrease the cost of this by five for each table you have out, extra table card you have out. So that's one way to 
get this easier if you have don't have a lot of money. If you want to upgrade this one here, it costs 12 money to upgrade. But if you have a, a server or a waitress out, you can decrease the cost by four for everyone you return to the supply. That's a server. And obviously, it will give you a permanent server by doing so. So this way, you'll never have to draw the server. You'll always have one out. So that's why you don't not want to buy too many servers because technically, you're going to get one at some point if you decide to upgrade this one. And then, let's see, if you upgrade this tile, it costs six money to upgrade, but if you do upgrade it, then you can hold on to five money and save five money for a, for a future turn if you don't have anything you wanna buy right away. And then this last tile here, this tile here, it costs nine money to upgrade this tile, but if you have a server card, you can decrease that value by three for each one you discard, or should I say, return to its pile over there. And then you'll get a permanent server, okay? So basically, the reason why I mention all of these tiles that you can upgrade is these are the ways that you're going to get these noble cards, which are going to give you the most victory points for every one you upgrade, basically. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different upgrades that you could upgrade to get nine nobles. So having a lot of beer, so producing a lot of beer will help you get more patrons that will have more numbers that you can roll to get more money. So you could like roll a six and get six money, for instance, if you had this one in your, in your, in your, in your tavern, for instance. Um, this one, you could roll a four and obviously take a four dice and put it on this one for four money. So it obviously gives you more choices when it comes to getting money from your, from your guests. Okay. So that's basically the game. I think I explained it pretty well how to actually play the game. I think I did a pretty good job. If you guys liked this video, don't forget to leave me a like if you guys liked it. And I'll see you guys again next time.